Now, instead of relying results shown on the internet, I decided to run a simple test myself to show you the difference between buying the dips versus dollar cost averaging. Spoiler alert, the result is mind blowing. Hey what is up guys, in this video I'm gonna share with you one investing strategy that even a donkey can implement and easily beat the stock market. Whoa whoa whoa, that's a really bold statement. Yes, that investing strategy is what we call the dollar cost averaging or DCA in short. I know most of you may have heard about DCA before but regardless, if you stick until the end of this video, I can assure you, you will walk away with some back testing data as well as my personal take towards this particular strategy. As usual, I will show you the structure of this video up front. Firstly, I will talk about about what is dollar cost averaging. Next, I will share with you why you should dollar cost average. And to back that up, I will also share with you some backtesting data to give you mathematical proof that historically, dollar cost averaging works. And last but not least, I will also share with you how I dollar cost average, some best practices that you can learn and implement in your investments. But just before we begin, can I ask for your kind favor to help me smack the like button down below? It means the world to me. Thank you very much. So with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into today's content. First and foremost, let's talk about what is dollar cost averaging. By definition, dollar cost averaging or DCA is an investment strategy in which an investor divides up the total amount to be invested across periodic purchases of a target asset in an effort to reduce the impact of volatility on the overall purchase. For example, if you have $5,000 right now, you can split them out into 3 or 4 purchases over the course of say 3 months. But then I'm sure you will always have this doubt, hmm. should you buy now or should you wait for the dip. On one side, you have news media saying that a huge inflation or a market crash is incoming because the US is printing so much money that 20% of the entire US dollars is printed in 2020 alone. On the other side, you are fighting with the fear of missing out and holding your big pile of cash while they lose their value to inflation. Very, very conflicting, right? But to be honest with you, most of the things that you see on the news articles or social media are nothing but clickbait to get your attention so that they can sell you advertisements or whatever that is. So if you turn off all of those noise and focus on what worked historically, both statistically and mathematically, then it all pinpoints to dollar cost averaging. Now let's go through a few reasons why you should practice dollar cost averaging. Firstly, it takes away your emotion out of investing. Don't you hate to have so many conflicting information that can ultimately affect your buy and sell decision? I mean, it's totally natural for us human beings to feel fear when a market crashes or to feel greed when the market is at all-time highs. There's nothing wrong at all. That is part and parcel of the flight or fight response that we all have. Heck, when I started investing back in July 2019, I was chasing the high and let greed get the best of me. I remember when I started investing, I started with 10,000 ringgit and fully spread them across banks and red stocks within the span of one month. Don't let inflation devalue your money, right, they say. I thought I was smart. I was an engineering graduate with more than 3.9 CGPA. And I'm also an analyst in a local public listed company. So valuations and numbers are really my bread and butter. Nothing will go wrong, right? And little did I know, one month after, on the 23rd August of 2019, the US-China trade war escalated when China announced $75 billion in tariffs on US goods and basically gave a huge blow to the entire stock market and my portfolio. Fast forward a few months later, in December the same year, the US-China trade war sort of eased a little bit and the stock market was climbing and every single day, the S&P 500 index was reaching all-time highs. I thought everything was fine, so I invested all of my remaining disposable incomes across more REITs and bank stocks. And just a few months later, as you can guess already, March 2020, COVID-19 struck and that pretty much sealed the deal for my portfolio as my portfolio was so heavy in banks and REITs, which is easily the two most impacted industry by the pandemic. So moral of the story, emotion got the better of me. I got greedy and cocky I admit. And the stock market just basically schooled me and spanked me within the first 6 months of my investing journey. How I wish someone taught me about DCA earlier. Anyways, second reason why you should practice dollar cost averaging is because, surprise, no one can time the market. Let's agree on something, there's really only two outcomes when you buy into any stock. Either it goes up or it goes down. And depending on the market sentiment, it might be 50-50 
and sometimes it might not be 50-50. If you really want to study the market economics and time the market, or you think that you are good at maths and you understand how the entire stock market works, then please hear me out first. There are a lot of studies and reports out there showing that 80% of US fund managers underperform the S&P 500 index and that active managing will continue to underperform. Some even say that most pros can't even beat the market. When we talk about pros, they are basically professionals working in huge financial institutions looking at stocks and assets every single second and every single minute. So, if a professional fund manager equipped with insider information, plus a huge team of analysts backing their valuation process and a full suit of trackers and indicators, but they still can't beat the S&P 500 index. What do you think about us as retail investors? You might be very well versed with a particular industry, but let's be honest, most of us have day jobs and commitments that we have to attend. Yes, you might get a few good straight here and there, but how sustainable is that? Is it really practical for all of us, Tom, Dick and Harry to time the market? Most probably no. There's a really well written article titled Even God Couldn't Beat Dollar Cost Averaging basically explaining to you why DCA is better than buying the dips backed by historical data. I highly encourage you to take 5 minutes of your time to read this article and I'll link it up in the description box below. Now, instead of relying results shown on the internet, I decided to run a simple test myself to show you the difference between buying the dips versus dollar cost averaging. Spoiler alert, the result is mind-blowing. So for example, let's invest about $5,000 over the course of 5 years into the S&P 500 index or the VOO ETF to be exact because that's what most people use to invest in the S&P 500 index. Assuming that I'm a godlike investor and I'm able to buy all of the dips in the S&P 500 index, I record this on an Excel table where I buy 2 shares of the VOO ETF every single dip. The first buy on the 24th June 2016 followed by 4th November 2016, 9th February 2018, and etc. up until the 29th of January 2021. Basically, I bought the bottom of all of the dips. So throughout that, I bought 22 shares of VOO ETF with an average cost of $247.79 per share. Yes, I invested around $5,451 in total cost, which is slightly more than the $5,000 earlier, but that shouldn't be a big issue. And currently, the VOO ETF is priced at $380 three dollars per share as of the recording of this video and that essentially translates to a total paper gain of 155 percent so pretty good right but that was assuming i was able to buy the bottom of every single dips now what if i said screw it just close my eyes dollar cost average and buy one share of voo etf every three months regardless of its price back to the same chart i bought one share of voo etf at the end of every three months interval and at the end of the day on 31st march 2021 with a total cost of $4,934. I have 20 shares in total with an average cost of $246.70 per share and that essentially translates to 155% of gain. Yeah. I was pretty shocked when I ran the test myself. I didn't expect it to be so close. Now, of course, I know the test wasn't perfect. On paper, yes, they technically have 155% return, but if you really want to pick bones from an egg, then theoretically buying the dips has a slightly better return due to the dividends as well as lesser brokerage fee incurred. But let's be honest, those are really small and negligible. I know there'll be skeptics saying that I cherry pick an easy and slow moving index, they are probably right but I just want to show you the point that if you just mistimed one dip and bought a single pick then you will most likely underperform against an investor that just dollar cost average and didn't bother to stare at the share price at all. So why not I show you another piece of data with Apple, one of the most well known company on earth. Using the same testing methodology, I timed the market perfectly and bought all of Apple's dips from 2016 until 2021 and ended up with 22 shares with an average cost of $64.30 per share and since Apple is now trading at around $134 per share this translates to 209% of total return on the flip side I dollar cost average one Apple stock every three months and ended up with 20 shares in total with an average cost of around $57.30 per share and that translates to a total return of 234% which is higher than buying the dips crazy I know right so I hope this gives you a better idea on how dollar cost averaging is a simple yet powerful strategy 
strategy. Sometimes we humans tend to overdo things and outsmart ourselves and do the exact opposite. The hardest thing to do in the stock market is actually to do nothing and invest consistently. I hope you get my point by now. Alright, in this section, I will share with you how I like to dollar cost average instead of just blindly buying into any stocks and ETFs at all time highs. As time goes by, I tweak the way I like to dollar cost average by implementing a few simple rules. Firstly, the most obvious one, I make sure that I am dollar cost averaging into a company that I am confident about its future prospect. Always do your research before investing into any company because promises may not be fulfilled and projections may miss. So don't get black hole vacuum into any hype stock. The second rule that I like to follow is split my investment into three purchases. If I intend to invest about $6,000 into Tesla, then I make sure I split them out into $2,000 each for 3 times. The first buy, I call it the opening position at any price that I'm happy with as long as it's not all time highs. The second buy, I call it the follow up, usually when it dips around 10 or 15%. And the third buy, which I call it the discretionary buy, depending on what is the current situation. If it further dips another 10%, then I will put down the remaining $2,000. If it grows further or my cash reserve is running low, then I will hold on to it until it drops below 15 or 20% from the all time highs. Or when it comes down to a support line for some time, then I will consider buying more. The third rule that I follow is pretty simple a 20% cash reserve for my portfolio in case of a bear market or a market crash. If my cash reserve falls below the threshold, then I will not buy the small deals because if touch wood the market really crashes, then I still have 20% of cash to cushion the impact of a worst case scenario. But for instance, when my cash reserve grown past that 20%, then I will most probably buy into my high conviction stocks such as Apple and Tesla just to increase my position in them. I hope you don't get confused with what I'm doing. I'm not trying to time the market, but I'm just trying to play more conservatively when I'm low on cash just to ensure I have a healthy cash buffer. So that's how I like to DCA myself. I hope you find this guidance helpful to you because I remember it was Graham Stephan who said the similar things and it really got me thinking of my investing strategy. That said, if you really can't afford to split your purchase into three times, which I totally understand, then I highly recommend you to have at least one follow up buys in case it dips like 20 or 30% because if not, you will be missing a lot on the discount. You just need to be patient and not get FOMO. I know it is hard sometimes, but if you have limited disposable income to invest, then one or two stocks is totally fine. Try to avoid buying into too many stocks if your account is less than 5 digits. Sometimes less is more. It allows you to have the power to focus more and dollar cost average if needed. Imagine if the market crashes and you hold 5 or 10 stocks you will be in deep, deep trouble. Okay, I hope this video was helpful to you or at least gave you a better idea on how to start a position and follow up with dollar cost averaging. This video was actually suggested by Rickets from the comment section of my previous video. I know sometimes US stocks might be a little bit pricey for just one single share, but try not to look at its price tag, instead look at the value that you are buying Sometimes cheap may not be good and expensive may not be bad at all. There's nothing wrong to pay more if you can invest into one of the world's best company. So it totally boils down to the value you are getting out of it. So what do you think? Did I do your time justice or did I give you a new perspective on the stock market? Or if you have any content that you would like to see, let me know in the comment section down below. And who knows, I might feature your comment and make it into one of my future video. The usual disclaimer applies, I am not a financial advisor and what I've just said is not an investment advice. It is merely my personal take towards this investing strategy. Alright, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay invested and as usual, I will see you in the next one.